Welcome to the 19th installment of Sports When We Don't Know, and I'm joined by Cindy Sid Wynn, and she's a professional angler, and she was actually the first female pro staff, first angler to join Columbia Sports Sportswear, so she's going to tell us all about her background and why she loves fishing. So, Cindy, thank you so much for joining the series. You're welcome. Thank you for having me today. Of course. I know it's crazy in Texas and Houston because you guys have the World Series where you guys are playing the Dodgers. So I know that's been keeping you busy and you guys are still recovering, obviously, from Hurricane Harvey. So yeah. good to see you in good spirits. All the, all the walls that are missing from my house right now. <laughs> oh, no, you poor thing. Yeah, I know from Instagram and, and social media, it looks like you guys are still pulling through for that. So I know that's a, a dark subject, but I know fishing is trying to keep you in positive spirits. So I want to first start off with how did you get hooked on fishing and and what led you to have a career in it too? Um, to be honest, um, I started really young. I mean, my parents were always taking us. I mean, my mom said she took me out whenever I was like two weeks old to the beach. So uh -huh. from, from then on, I mean, they've always brought me out with them. And I fished all along the coast of Texas when I was a kid from here all the way down to Mustang Island. And um, that's what I did. That's our pastime and it still is. So I'm hooked and my family, I mean, that's what we do. <laughs> so, I mean, fishing is not just, um, you know, a hobby and you're going out there and you're catching fish. It's, it's everything. It's getting the family ready and getting food and all this stuff ready. And then afterwards, you know, you're, you're cooking and cleaning and doing all kinds of stuff together. So, it's a, always an event. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is a real process. I know from seeing my dad do it, and, and I'm similar like you. I think you've probably fished a little longer than I have, um, but I've, I've seen it since I was like 8, 9, 10, you know, yeah. getting into that time. And it's a full throng process. It's not just catching the fish. It's filleting it and gutting it and seeing the yucky stuff and the good stuff and then, like, having it turn into a meal. So I mean, it's like, you know, when I was a kid, we were, we were fishing, we were fishing. Um, in the beach. It was really awesome because I, everybody else was playing in the sand and all I remember was playing in these, um, I guess it was like little um, sandbar creeks that were formed um, from the ways down in San Luis Pass. And I mean, that's, that's just what I did down there. We were catching little things <laughs> all the time and showing my little cousin. So, I mean, I've just always, um, I can't be near the water without having a fishing rod with me or right. me nuts. So <laughs> that's so funny. It's like that whenever I fly too. It's like I have to have a window seat because I I want to see the water, and then I'm wondering what the heck is in the water, you know? So yeah, I'm the same way. If it's if you're flying over water, you have to see it. <laughs> like I, that's with me. Yeah, growing up in California, and, and I know. Anywhere, if you grew up on the coast and you love fishing, I feel like all of us are like, we need to be near water. We can't be too far away. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> and so, no, you've grown up with fishing and you've made a career out of it. So kind of tell everyone a little bit about your partnership with Columbia and how that first got to start. Um, I mean, I really think that just kicks off with advent of like social media. Um, I, like I said, I've fished all my life, but... Um, having social media and having the ability to share my fishing stories really mm -hmm. helped. And then um, I met somebody, Sam Root, I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but um, Sam is like a media content guru in the fishing industry. Mm. And um, he took me on a first date and it was sight fishing for redfish. Oh, and how we, nice. Yeah, we went out there and we caught these huge pumpkins and I promise you I have Still to this day, I have not caught redfish like that, and <laughs> it was just an awesome experience. And then a couple of weeks later, he's like, sends me a link, and I'm on a on the cover of Coastal Angler. And oh so wow! On, it just blew up. So I, I do have to give him credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, I mean, redfish and fishing. I mean, that's that's been my whole life. So when I met him, it actually wasn't even via fishing it was from booting and fitness and stuff so um having that connection with somebody was really cool and then being able to you know he's taught me a lot and getting out there and sharing that stuff you know through all the different channels has definitely helped me out so 
Yeah, and then and then Columbia just saw your social media work and was yeah. like, we need to work with her because she has a yeah. unique vision. So the way that happened, kind of, um, they they reached out to me and was like, we've been following you for a really long time, and um, you know, we like the way you promote everything about what you're doing in fishing and from there on um and actually the, the reason why i brought sam up is because we we actually took a trip down to the bahamas and um, we got some gear from columbia for that trip and if you go to my facebook page and look on my cover photo it's that photo it's like an iconic like shark fishing photo <laughs> you know i mean i just I don't know. It's just from then on, everything just kind of kicked off, and I'm in I'm in Columbia gear from head to toe, and I have been since you know I've been fishing. So that it's nothing really had to change much with me being with Columbia. So that was the cool part, you know. It's really easy when you have sponsors who um, you are. I mean, you don't have to. I mean, that's the thing with sponsorship. You really want to find folks that you connect with that you don't have to like change who you are. You know, mm -hmm. I, I wear Columbia. Or come to work or every day. <laughs> you know, so I mean it's it's a uh, it's been a really cool experience. And then um so I've I've been with them now for going on my fourth year. Oh wow, that's a um, long partnership. Yeah, it's been really strong. And the experience I've had with them has been amazing. We've gone to Costa Rica. Um I I've gone to Vietnam with them this last year. Um they got my grandmother to do the voiceover in one of our films, well, the PFG films that we did this year, which was pretty pretty much like solidified everything I've done with Columbia. And it really just made me appreciate like at that moment, I was like, they have no idea. Like there's nothing more they could possibly do for me right now. Aww, that's so <laughs> nice. know, just, just, those memories are going to be there forever and they're shared on YouTube. And mm -hmm. that's the thing is like, you don't realize all the stuff that you put on, on social media, a lot of the stuff is going to be out here for, you know, ever so long after we're gone, you know? Oh, yeah. And so, um, and that's everything. That's our fishing stories, our photos, our videos, everything, all that, all that content is out there and it's going to get continued to be shared, you know? So, what all these all these little things that we're doing now and I just don't realize like how big of an impact social media has had mm -hmm. on it. And, and in a positive way I can't tell you that I'm uh, on a social media level and um I guess getting into I was talking to my sister about this today because I was like you know like how would you get more women out on the water you know mm -hmm. she's like She's like, you gotta start them young because you can't you can't get these millennials out there and have them have a clue because you know it's it's almost like contradictory because we use social media so much but we're trying mm -hmm. to, to get people away from their computers and their video games and get outdoors mm -hmm. but um i mean you know we use it for to share our stories and I know it's ironic in a sense and, and we can segue into that actually because i wanted your thoughts because You've been taught about you work obviously with one of the biggest outdoor companies and we hear a lot in fishing circles and you've probably heard of the mention of R3 recruitment retention reactivation, which is a really big thing in conservation circles and fishing is not really struggling. There's actually a really steep incline, which is so good. I was so happy to see that when the Fish and Wildlife Service released their new report last month or so, but hunting is kind of lagging, um, but that's obviously a different conversation because that lifestyle unfortunately is attacked more than the fishing lifestyle. You still get some opposition from PETA because they think, you know, about fish and <laughs> well, that, but I think um, it's a lot easier to go fishing. It's not as costly as going hunting, just in my experience, because what led me to not go hunting for a while was I was like, I'm going to have to spend thousands of hundreds of dollars. I don't want to do this. Like I'm just going to stick with fishing. So I think um, it's important to note that fishing does have fewer barriers to entry now because like people are restricting. But I wanted to have your thoughts since you're a little older than me. We're we're like in the same generation, but obviously you've been in the industry a little bit longer than I have. And um, I just want to kind of get your thoughts and what you think because it is true getting people younger than our generation is almost impossible unless they've started out really early. And I think our three. Um, I sat in a presentation at ICAST which. We were there together and it was sad we weren't able to connect so we'll, we'll remedy that next year or maybe before that too. Uh, but I sat in their 60 and 60 lecture with my friend Debbie Hansen who you know uh, of She Fishes 
And they were saying that 90% of kids who don't fish before like 18 never are going to fish uh, beyond that. It's going to be very difficult to get people hooked. I, I agree. And I, and it, yeah, kind of share your thoughts on like, what do you think? What have you seen? Is it mentorships? Is it taking people on the water? Is it showing them how to do demos? Is it taking them on trips? Is it just lecturing them on schools or campuses or groups? What do you think would be effective? Yeah, I mean, I, to be honest, I really think starting them out young is like the best way. I mean, because, mm -hmm. you know, once you grow older, you have, you have your own ideas about things and you have your own hobbies and things that you're already into, you know, but when you're younger and you're exploring, I mean, my parents, made me stay outdoors. Like we couldn't come inside until you know, <laughs> the lights came on, you know? And so and like things like that, it's like, I think you just kind of have to, you have to guide your kids and you have to like, I mean, I don't have kids of my own, so don't get me wrong. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but you know, to me, it's like, like my little nieces, they love fishing um, and their parents take them out on the water as much as they can, you know? And so when they come down here and they see, they're actually from the Midwest, so when they come down here and they see saltwater fishing, it's like so easy, you know, to just go down to the coast and just, you know, <laughs> hookers and, it, and they're just in, in love with it. And so um, I definitely think starting them out young is like, is what you have to do. You have to get these programs out there so that kids want to go outside and do these kinds of things. And, and you know, it's certainly not about like for us, it might be tactical and we might, you know, put a lot of stress on ourselves on some days out in the water, but Mm -hmm. Really, it's all about it's all about having fun and being out there with people and um, yes. you know soaking it all up. So that's that's definitely where where it should be. <laughs> oh yeah, and I know actually even young professionals uh, are are getting hooked more so through like fly fishing. I know so many people here in the DC metro area, which is not known to be a fishing haven, but believe it or not, it is. And yeah. and we'll. Talk more about that and getting you kind of roped in. I know I was talking a little bit off, off social media about lead fishing, so we do have some, and we'll get you hopefully roped here too. But um, people go fly fishing here like crazy, which I've never seen in any metro area before, like close really? to the nation's capital. So it's, it's interesting. You know, I have to admit, I'm not the most avid fly angler, but I I'm the same way too. <laughs> I do like to try whenever you know when I'm out with friends that do fly fish. I'll, I'll yeah. definitely. Do it, but, um, it's a different it's technique. Yes. Yeah, it, it's so different. It's like you have to master, you know, a different technical skill. Not that it's impossible. It's just like you have to use different uh, flies for each type of fish you're going to target. And it's like, but what if I don't have enough time? It's hard. <laughs> so it's like it's a multi-throng process, but it's good. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of people who've never fished somehow pick that up, which is really interesting. Yeah. Um, that's kind of what I see. I don't know if it, we have to like increase fly fishing, but I think even just having maybe demos and expositions, even with regular spinner cast, right. I think that could even be good for people in our age group and a little older, especially those with more purchasing power. There are a lot of mothers and like you know fathers and, and other people who are married and they have kids and they've never gone fishing and they're looking for activities to bond with. Yeah, um, and, and they're choosing fishing as one of those activities. So even those who may have, I think those are people who probably like tapered off. They like did fishing as kids and then like stopped it for a time and maybe remember how to do, but there may be even someone who's never done it. So perhaps I think those could work too. Maybe Columbia will have you do some of those fishing expos <laughs> or like Bath Pro or Cabela's or something like that. I've been on a little downtime these last few weeks, but um, hoping by Thanksgiving, I'll be back on the water again. So We'll see where that goes, but um, yeah. but yeah, definitely. I think getting and that's that's like the the probably most important thing about everything I do. Like that's probably the most the where my passion is is getting kids back on the water because um, you do have to start them young and you do have to take yeah. them fishing. My little cousins are here from Vietnam and they've never gone fishing in their lives. You know, living wow. in Vietnam, there's no kind of really sport fishing there. And so, um, actually, no, he, I take that back. He said that he, one of them said that he, they fished from like one of those like uh, restaurant fish ponds. He said it was a little <laughs> for them. But um, I took them down to the dike where my family took us camping when we were kids. And mm -hmm. 
And um, I don't know, you probably saw those pictures of my grandma fishing. It was that was all their first time fishing. Oh, that's so and, sweet. I love those pictures. <laughs> so endearing. Yeah. And so <laughs> it was their first time to all be like anywhere close to like salt water and recreation wow. fishing and hanging out with family like that and um, down here with us. And it was just a blast. It was probably like two hours right before the sun fell, but they got hooked. And so now every weekend they're like, are we going to go fishing this weekend? <laughs> let me let me let me check my schedule to see what we got going on this weekend first because I don't even have walls put up in my house yet. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, they they've gotten hooked and it it really it was really cool to see that because it's it's a my it's their boy and a girl you know and okay. so to get them both out there and both like love it that really that really um, made me feel good. So hopefully I can. Uh, convince them to come back out with me Thanksgiving and fish some more. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll you see. Totally but, you know. That's sweet. No, I saw those pictures. I was like, you're taking your grandma fishing. That's so sweet. Yeah, man. So I cool. decided and, I was going to go to the beach house and bring my grandma down there and have her sit on the dock with me for Thanksgiving. So <laughs> we'll see where that goes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's but so great that you make it a family in affair. In fall is like the best time of year to get kids out there. Oh yeah. It's cool outside. Um, the bugs aren't nearly as bad, you know, and and there's a lot of fish to be caught. So there's bait moving and bull croakers. That's what I grew up fishing. It's like these bull croakers and hmm. they pull like redfish. You know, when you're a kid and you have one on ultralight tackle, it's it's pretty cool, right? It's cool for us now. So yeah, so that's that's probably the the biggest like initiative I have and I'm hoping to like really um really emphasize on that this year 2018 to see if I can get more involved in those things that get kids out there or you know just anybody who really wants to be more involved with the sports or get outdoors I get a lot of um questions from all kinds of people you know how do I get my wife out there how do I get my girlfriend out there how do I get my kids out there you know and you just have to not make it about yourself. You just have to go out there and mm -hmm. have fun and enjoy that time. Soak up everything. You know, there's birds, there's, you know, sunset, sunrise, crabbing. You're just being outside is just awesome, right? And so you just yeah. have to make it enjoyable. And once you do that, I think that's when people start to realize, like, man, this is what you should be doing on the weekends, not, you know, vegging around. So that's so true. And there's so much you can admire from just fishing. You wake up early. It may suck to wake up early, but you see a cool sunrise. You get to <laughs> befriend the people you go fishing with. Like there are many a times I think both of us and any and all of our friends who go fishing, we can recount like having very good times, like in spite of having to wake up early or if it's like, in a kind of lackluster condition or there was no bites and then there were bites. So fishing <laughs> always is an interesting time and you always learn something new and you polish your technique or you bring someone new. <laughs> So it's a lot of fun. And, and everyone's like, it's so boring, like sitting and waiting to like, you know, reel in your fish. And it's, I'm like, it's so exhilarating though, when you have it, you just have to be patient. <laughs> you know, when I was a kid, um, I've, I've never actually been really good at catching flounder. My sister to this day still catches flounder more than I oh, do. Wow. So flounder season, I get excited about because there, you know, there's a lot to do out there. But I, to be honest, like between me and my sister, like she's way better than me at it. Oh. And, um, and it's so funny because like this is a time of year where we go out there and you, know, you just you have so much out there to like go after and um <clears throat> I, mean, that, I don't know how else to, i'll say it you know i think this is to get folks out there um to fish to fish more whether it's you know a child or an adult like you just have to make it enjoyable for them you know Mm -hmm. um, sometimes sitting around waiting for a fish isn't isn't so fun, you know. So find another spot, mm -hmm. you know, find something else you to want to do in it. Go crabbing. I don't know. <laughs> is a lot of fun. I stop moving when I'm out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you always have to switch your spot. We always tell people you have to do that. Like you can't. Sometimes if it, you know the spot is lackluster, you switch. You find a different coordinate. Right. And, you know, and it's, you will see, like you said, nature and wildlife at your disposal. So no, I think, I think there's a lot of opportunities and people like yourself who have uh, a platform to do that will certainly uh, 
be able to do that. So Cindy, why don't you tell everyone what has been your most memorable fishing catch and what will be, or what is your dream fishing catch to kind of conclude the interview? Um, my most memorable catch is probably a sailfish out of Costa Rica. Um, it was my first, um, actually, it wasn't my first trip out of the country to fish, but it was um, the first one with Columbia. And ah. the best thing about it was we were on, we did a couple of days of fishing with women. And um, and I was on a boat with um, Chris Woodward from uh, uh, Sport Fishing Magazine. And it was so cool to have like, just a group of women to like get together who were like cheering each other on, you know? And it wasn't, it wasn't easy the whole time because you know, we're going during off season. And once we finally hooked up and got into some, some real fishing, um, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I caught my first sailfish and all the girls were around me and we got some really awesome footage. Um, uh, two of us were able to like jump into the water, you know, do our first like sailfish dip. And so it was, it was probably the most memorable trip yet. And not only because, you know, you're fishing for plagics in foreign countries, but, mm -hmm. um, but just to, just to see, you know, other women be like excited for you and, you know, be excited for other women who've never gone fishing before at all, you know? So mm -hmm. I think that was probably the most memorable. And, and if you talk to Chris to this day, she'll talk to you about it. And it's pretty cool. Um, I had a photographer, from Columbia also on board that day. And I mean, I made some really amazing friendships and I really hope that they know how much they mean to me because those few days of fishing with them, I, I remember every conversation and every everything we caught. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. That's probably the best memory so far, but I'm sure there'll be more. And, you know, I'm sure we'll, we'll have to get out there. And do uh, yes. <laughs> we'll do some filming, photography, cooking, everything. Oh like I have never, I've always wanted to go fishing in your corner of Texas before because I know the the bite is exquisite. I've only been to Houston, I've been to Houston, I've been to like Texas five different times, so it was always for business. I never got to actually go out <laughs> and fish. So I'm yeah. hoping to do it in the future. And anytime you come to Virginia, you always have a invitation for fishing and all that jazz. So it'll be lots of fun. Yeah, one of these days, so much. I'd love to just tour right down the coast and catch redfish in every little state, you know, going down. That would be so awesome. Oh, and yeah, I know. Do you follow the account Bad Fish TV? They have, like, the, they're all a bunch of guys. I feel like it'd be cool to start, like, a female, like, version yeah. of them, of, like, females, like, touring and fishing. That'd be cool, but I don't think I could travel. They traveled, like, all across the country, which I don't think I could do unless I had lots of extra money on hand to go fishing. <laughs> to be able to do that but i like what they did about touring the country and fishing and like i think close to all 50 states or they fished in a few of the states that they visited in their like 50 state tour with bass Pro. i was like that's cool yeah okay that's that that is sound like a dream trip i don't know maybe women will get to do things like that right yeah oh i think we could our gender is capable of anything and uh no i mean there are a lot of female anglers too so who'd be open to that? And what would you say is your dream fishing catch or a dream fishing trip you'd like to take in the future? Dream fishing trip? Um, to be honest, I, I grew up dreaming about Australia and I would just love to go out there and fish one day. I, I don't even care what I catch, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'd love to see a cage with a, a great white, you know, someone around me. I don't know, I might be crazy enough to be out in the water with the great white too. I don't know. I just, I, when I think of fishing and like ultimate fishing trips, I think of Australia for some reason, but I've never, never even gone close to being over there. So <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's a really cool place from what I've heard much like you, I haven't gone there, but Debbie, she went there with her husband and they fished for these like monster trout mm -hmm. in New Zealand or Australia. So they have a lot, they have like saltwater, freshwater varieties. They have everything. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah it, definitely, it would definitely be somewhere really far away from here. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So, Cindy, where can everyone connect with you across social media? Um, you can find me on Facebook, of course, Cindy Wind Fishing. Um, and then um, you can also find me on Instagram, S-I-D-T-X. So, Sid is my nickname that um, 
I had growing up, and you can find me with that. So I'll throw the links up here shortly. So awesome. You guys no, I, I put your Columbia link, pro staffer link. Okay, yeah, and I think on there they have all the all the icons too, and you can just nice. see all of my stuff. So yeah, that. I'll be sure to include that now. Lost my train of thought for a second when I was talking to you earlier, but I brought up my sister. But I was what what I wanted to say now that I remember is that uh -huh. when you're you know when that boredom part where you're like getting worried about getting bored and being out there, you know, a lot of times when I was a kid fishing, um, I would just kind of zone out, I zone out a lot, <laughs> but I would oh, zone yeah. out and that's when I would always catch a fish. And so sometimes I would just not pay attention, you know, mm -hmm. and I don't know if that means anything, but I mean, I just remember like, I would just look out into the distance and the horizon and soak everything up. And as soon as I did, I would catch a fish. And so that's where that's where that whole conversation with the flounder came from. I don't know where I was thinking for a second there. <laughs> it's okay. You know, it's a crazy time. A lot's going on. So we always it's always good to, you know, add the the thoughts. And that is true. Like I, I when I went snook fishing with Debbie and her husband, we were we were catching fish, but nothing really catchable to keep because I'm of the mindset, much like you, if I can catch something, not take everything, but if I can catch something to keep, I would love to, you know, make fish tacos or yeah. something out of it. <laughs> So uh, we were fishing for snook, and I think it was 20 minutes out from the end of our trip, and I hooked in my first ever snook. So these unexpected fish will come at any time. You just have to, like, be there at the right moment and never know what's on the other end of the line. <laughs> yeah, I actually I haven't ever caught a snook that I've been able what? to take with me. Yeah, oh. I've always gone, like, when it's out of season. So oh, no. Maybe one day. <laughs> You need to fix that. Like, go fishing with Debbie when you, if you ever go to Fort Myers, now she's doing some guiding. With her, so, right? she's another person that wants to like connect with that ICAST, and I didn't get a chance to, but I, I definitely will. I mean, she's on my mind every day. Yeah. yeah. No, and um, you know, she showed me around ICAST. It was my first ICAST. So that was a lot of fun. I'm sad we didn't get to cross paths. Oh, I know we okay. come in social okay, media. Well, then we'll have to set out some time this year. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, Virginia and Texas are not that far apart, so it. Yeah. Well, I think we'll see much of each other in the coming <laughs> in the coming months. I yeah, we can do a lot of fun even fun. right after ICAST. I always yeah. I, mean, I can't go to Florida and not fish. So whether it's before, during, or after, I'm fishing. Right. Right. <laughs> so I've included all those links, and I hope everyone connects. And you've had a very, very interesting story related to fishing, and it's so awesome to see you get out and do it. I wish I could do it as much as you. And I know you're still kind of, you know, recovering from Hurricane Harvey, but it's okay. Like you guys will be fine. Hopefully relief efforts are getting better and, and you'll get back on the water soon. Oh yeah. Uh, you guys are a very strong city. You definitely hear about it. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So all right, everyone, make sure you connect with Cindy across social media. I've included links to follow and that's pretty much it for this installment. And we will have another episode next week. So Cindy, thank you for joining. Thank you all for watching. Have a good night. All right. Bye. Go Strohs. <laughs>